I wish we could go back in time. We really should tell MLK, you know, about the cure because <laughs> I don't think I don't think he fully understood it back then. Is, is it? Jesus, there's no Just way to fucking. I'm fucking out of here. Let him say, but, let him say the cure. But why are you trying to make like such a serious point? I don't understand what. Oh. Do you think somebody's right. going right, to learn from this? Right. Now, now that racism is solved. <laughs> uh, Gobble, he was talking for your... fucking five minutes. I've been very patient. <laughs> I've tell been very us, patient. Too. Tell us about your first open mic set. Uh, comedy. 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 Welcome to the comedy hall. <laughs> yeah, money. Perfect. Uh huh. Okay. Ciao, guys. Ciao. Welcome. Welcome to the uh, comedy hall podcast. Here we have Jordan Thomas Gray at Jordan Thomas Gray and Ariel Bielski. That's at me, Ariel Bielski. <laughs> well, yeah. Beatrice is uh, on tour yeah, right and now. We did have Robo Beatrice last week, but uh, we decided to scrap that idea. Oh, you guys used well, the she, soundboard. She we broke used the soundboard. Down. She broke her, down. Yeah. She it broke was too bad. It, you know what? Jordan got a little trigger happy in the middle of people's sentences. A, yeah, I got a little excited and I pressed too many buttons and uh, they That's took too bad. Robo I was kind of hoping. Yeah, I was really hoping for the. The third comedy hole to be here is this suck yeah. the air out of the room. Well, Be- Beatrice, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Beatrice, uh, a very talented. Oh, I'm just getting warmed up. Don't worry. A... <laughs> Beatrice, as you know, very talented, uh, young. She likes to. She told you that. Yeah, yeah okay. she told us to say that she's young and talented and uh, very funny. Uh, she is going to Riga, Vilnius, Prague. Budapest, a bunch of other places with Jimmy Pepperoni from yeah. a previous episode. He's touring around Europe, so yeah. if you're in Europe, do it up. But listen, I've we have a special heard of him. guest. Is he, is he good? Don't. He's great. He's yeah. Jimmy Pepperoni. Right, yeah. He's Jimmy fucking Pepperoni. Does he put okay? a pepperoni in his pants before he goes on stage? <laughs> <laughs> He's hey. like his whole shtick. Frutti yeah. di mare. I'm kidding. It's a pepperoni. It's a pepperoni. Uh, Here is my penis. But yes, but uh, in any case, what we're saying is that we have a special guest. <laughs> special if I guest. didn't know who, who that person was, <laughs> I would to be totally down to just do that for half an hour. I would just... <laughs> also, yes, it's... that's all we did when we saw yeah. him. And he's Italian and he was not yeah. so pleased about right, right. calling him Jimmy I Pepperoni. I loved this. Yeah. I, I listened to the episode with uh, Filippo, actually, and it was, I think it was one of the fewer where you guys actually... It almost got into some uh, serious discourse, and and then Beatrice was like, ah, "But if, uh, what, what is your favorite ice cream flavor?" <laughs> In the middle of a sentence, <laughs> yeah, she's just like protective over her boyfriend. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, but yes, I was introducing That's you, but sexist. I'm glad you're no, the I'm one. I'm not gonna let you. I'm yeah. not gonna let you finish. I'm glad you're the one interrupting because usually it's I'm, Jordan or I'm me. The opposite of I'm Kanye West. Inter- I'm not gonna let you finish. Okay, <laughs> and also I like Jews. <laughs> it's gonna be. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I, think, I don't mind Jews. It's gonna be a rough wait, episode to edit. Wait, you said you, do, you <laughs> no, don't. don't mind it's just, you don't mind Jews? Hmm? Yeah, no, I said because I said I'm the opposite of Kanye West. It was a bad joke. Nobody you, you know what? It actually actually hits very well because our last episode was with Rana, mm-hmm. who's she Muslim, and uh, all her jokes is about how she hates Jews as a joke, of yeah. course. So she's not really Muslim. She, she's full of shit. Like half these fucking foreigners that come to Poland and buy up our... Uh, Make our strawberries more expensive, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, uh, to be honest, she's super Muslim. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, but, she, but she's not hijabi or anything. Like, is it, she doesn't even cover her hair. So how I is that? A, I think that's a sect of she, uh, okay. Muslimism. Yeah, I don't I know, guess. man. I, I forget no where she's from. She's so, from Jordan. the Middle East. Someone that, uh, she <laughs> was at the open mic last night. It was heckle night. And someone, she's making Jew jokes. And someone said, female Kanye West. Oh. And I said, because I'm very funny. I said, Kanye breast. That was, that's, that's good. good. I, I like got that. a big oh. laugh. Got a big laugh. Pow, pow, pow. Jordan is bragging. All right, shall we? Uh, that's true. Already. <laughs> Jordan is bragging. All right, we have a special guest. Do we? We do have a special guest. Let, okay. Let's 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 all have a moment of silence so that Ariel can introduce our special guest. Oh, I thought you were gonna do it. I'll do it. Okay. Uh, how about you? You work up to it, and then I'll say his name. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest, a very funny guy. He's been a staple of the Warsaw comedy scene. He's a very funny guy. Every time he performs, oh, it's a treat for the audience and for us. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a very funny guy, Gavo Feliga. Okay. It's, it's a very nice introduction for that audience of five comedians that you guys have. <laughs> I'm, I'm very pleased. Thank you. It's an honor. 
You guys are great. You're like Laurel and Hardy with a gym membership. It's <laughs> oh, it's like a uh, workout. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. I like it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess. Who's Laurel and Hardy? <laughs> Do you really not know? Them? I really don't know. Really? I mean, I, it's ancient. It's older than than me even. But uh, it's a fat guy and a skinny guy. Classic comedy shit. I'm it's fat. Like, yeah, you're a fat ass. With a gym a membership, guy? that's why. I, oh, no, one is short and the other one is tall. I see. And, you oh. think I'm short? Oh, fuck off. Man. <laughs> right. I don't even know. How, to, to be honest, I don't pay that much attention to people's height. Really, I really don't. Because yeah. people are like, oh, you're tall. And I don't notice until it's like way below uh, my waistline. You're like 6'2". Six, six Something like that, yeah. Yeah. I'm and sure. RL 6'8". I'm 6'8", I'm, I'm yeah. I'm six on a very, very, very good day. We're in Europe. Nobody fucking knows what that is anyway. 181 so, yeah. centimeters. All right, all right. Yeah, you're pretty 183 tall. in shoes. Oh, if interesting. If they're really good shoes, short people care about this stuff. We, we really, no, we, we got to pad. That's not short. I mean, that's not short. You're not, Compared don't to sell Ariel. yourself short. <laughs> hey Because there's people that are way smaller than you. And now you see and. why he's a fan favorite. <laughs> <laughs> he's so funny. Gavo Faliga, everybody. Gavo, uh, we have a, way of podcasting where we do no research beforehand and know very little about our guests. So why don't you yeah, I don't know tell what, our audience uh, about yourself? I what? don't know what you would research. Yeah. That's like, a, first like, of all, uh, that's a, that is a very bad <laughs> intro for Gavel. <laughs> to let the audience know, Gavel, uh, Gavel's been doing it for a while here in Warsaw, would you say 10 years? Yeah, much longer than I care to admit. Yeah. 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 Mm. And, but also in <laughs> Polish and in English. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, definitely mostly in Polish for the first uh, few years. Although my very first uh, three open mics were in English because I technically, I guess I started in Seattle, but then I didn't do anything for five years until I came back to Warsaw. So okay, okay. Because like you can't tell by Gabo's accent that he's a I was Polak. Here, yeah. He's a dirty fucking Polak. I'm a Polak. dirty fucking Polak. I got sausages <laughs> in my bag. I brought them with you and it's... Uh, with... <laughs> I actually... I actually... Cause I... I do have a story about that, which is not that funny, but yeah. Just All right, well, what? What? Oh, no, it's just like, I don't know if you guys ever profiled, get profiled because like, how would you? I don't know. Tall, basketball. Tall, like yeah, yeah, basketball. basketball I guess that kind of counts. By the yeah. police or just by people? Oh, just in general. No, not by the police. Like has someone written a profile about us? Like in GQ? Yeah, what yeah do, what I mean you... like st stereotypes. Which is, <laughs> it's, I was, yeah, I was learned about, uh, right about the Laurel. You got to look up Laurel and Hardy. It's going to really inspire you. I mean, you're going to love it. I think you should. One of them Jordan. is... Do they have? All right, no. Let me they try, have YouTube. Let me yeah, try to stick alive. to the topic for 15 seconds. I do have a little bit of ADD, oh, but so it's no we. excuse. Oh, yeah, I, I yeah. Do. what? In fact, let's, let's play a song. Let's talk about, I see a piano. Let's play a song. <laughs> let's talk about my ADD for a while. This is, uh, <laughs> uh, all right, continue. Yes. Uh, what was the question? Oh no, I was, I was I was the one that offered a story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, about sausages. You have sausages. You have sausages. In yeah, your bag. it's pretty much the whole fucking story. We were uh, at the airport going through customs. This is when I was still, I don't know, my early teens or a kid. But we were going uh, from Poland to uh, the U.S., which would probably be either Chicago or New York. I don't remember. It might have been Chicago. It makes more sense. And the guy was like uh, checking our bags. I don't know. We got this was way before uh, way before uh, nine eleven and all that. But so I guess they didn't have uh, maybe they didn't have as many brown people uh, to uh, harass. So they were like hand checking our bags. And the guy's asking if we have any food or whatever, fruit, whatever the fuck is forbidden. And they're like, no, no. And he's like, no? Where are you coming from? He's like, oh, yeah, Warsaw. No, no Polish sausage, no kielbasa, <laughs> uh -huh. nothing, no pickles. And I'm like, no. And I wasn't offended by that. I was almost amused. but Because uh, you did have I, sausages in your bag. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I ruined your story. Both pant legs. <laughs> and the stupid fucker never found them. <laughs> did you actually have sausages in no, your pant legs? No, <laughs> yes. no. Yes. No, I say that because like... Because uh, I, <laughs> I do that all the time. You know? yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of a trick I learned. I mean, literally. I actually, like, because when I was... DJing, <laughs> Mr. Step over the joke. Uh, I, 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 when I was DJing, I absolutely like I was hungry because I didn't sure. eat all day. But like I started DJing at ten o'clock at night, and it was a um, uh, silent disco. Okay. So it was like three DJs, and you know you chat to each other a little bit, but you can't really talk to each other that much because you have headphones on, so you can't be f as friendly with the DJs. You start off saying hi, and that's about it. But like in the middle of it, I pulled out a sausage because I was so hungry. I just had it in my jacket pocket and I started munching on it and I was like silently offering it to the other DJs and they're like, they're Polish, fully Polish, but they're like, what the fuck's wrong mm. with you? But like, I think it's a, 
it's a normal thing for a tall guy, I guess. Absolutely, maybe. yeah. Carrying all types of food items in there. I, I got you. Got to get some celery stalks in there to balance it out. You could fit a, a whole uh, <laughs> a whole salad in there. That's right. <laughs> <A whole laughs> in my salad. leaf by leaf. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> okay. So <laughs> putting little like cookies on the on the. I guess you know. Did you ever use turntables to? Uh, what, once. Only things? once. Yeah. yeah. Only once in and you're like. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's 2022. <laughs> you were doing a. Well, I know, but I feel like you've been doing this for a while, so no, I guess, yeah. I wasn't born in the 70s or 80s. No, I was born in the 80s. Never mind. Mm. Uh, but but uh, no, I mean, no, I use uh, I use all electronic sure. equipment. So, um, but like, but okay, but listen, we're getting crazy off topic before we even- Let's get serious, even knows. you guys. Don't do drugs, just only under uh, supervision of other- Junkies yeah. because they know what to do. And don't let people tell you you can't eat sausages while you're DJing. Absolutely not. Yeah, I put a little slices on the... That's why I was asking about the record. <laughs> oh, is that <laughs> just what you want? Little, just put, I just make want, a pizza? imagine somebody putting food on the, yeah, on the <laughs> platter, on the vinyl. I actually... so Slipping it out with, your, with uh, your tongue. I don't even remember actually when I met you. I'm sure Jordan met you at my open mic. I think I met him at Boho. Okay. Oh, right. Of course, that's possible too, the, yeah. the other open mics. Um. Uh, but, uh, I met you, I mean, we have, I know your sister. We have so many mutual, uh, acquaintances. Yeah. I think it's kind of crazy. Because my sister lived in Warsaw for a long time. And so, uh, d- did you know my sister? Yes. Intimately. Briefly. I don't, I don't. <laughs> Everyone did. Yeah. yeah. I was going to be the, <laughs> the Gavo true. in Paula and Caro, but Caro was like, well, I can actually play instruments. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Well, <laughs> I'm not a, Kapal and Caro is my sister's you, band. And uh, you guys don't want somebody to, to feature the sounds of cunnilingus <laughs> on your record. Uh, <laughs> that's the, that's the instrument <laughs> you play? I'm a very proficient, yeah, cunnilingus player. Yeah. 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 Me too. Me too. Me too. Yeah. 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 Me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> me too. I mean, that's what they say. Well, on the internet after I hang out with them. Uh, hey, <laughs> yo, Harvey Weinstein, oh, everybody. <laughs> it took me a second. It's a Somehow me too I joke. Didn't, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see you in that. That's a set. me rapist. I'm I was rapist. trying to imagine you with with like a, a Harvey Weinstein toupee on for a second. It didn't work. <laughs> it doesn't who do, work. Who do you think is the most likely comedian in our community to make a hashtag Me Three joke? With a with a with a punchline is hashtag Me Three. Uh, Terry. I don't know what the joke would be. I don't know either. <laughs> but the punchline would be me three, and they would somehow build up yeah. to it. Do you you uh, understand the question? Of course, yeah. I don't care. Is the <laughs> <laughs> I don't care to talk shit about other comedians. Oh no, Fuck I love you, talking Terry. shit. I love yeah. talking shit. That just I don't I don't know didn't strike my fancy. I guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to remember who had the joke. I can't because somebody did one that was like. Oh, it was probably on a podcast. Might have been Nick Mullen, where he's like the uh, you know the the move um, the cause of it aside. It's a really bad name for a movement because it's sort of like you know somebody's relaying the most traumatic experience in their life ever to you, and you're like, oh yeah, me too. It's just like oh me too. Yeah, tell always, me yeah. about it, sister. It's always a douchebag, actually. I, and now that you mentioned that, there used to be there was a Neptune song, uh, a nerd song. It's like. Mr. Me Too. It was before yeah. the Me Too movie. Well, yeah, that was yeah, that was about like, it was about imitators like, or mm, yeah, about a wannabes. guy who was like, oh, I, oh, I have a Lamborghini. Oh, yeah, me too. And it was yeah. like, uh huh, yeah, me too. Well, right, because it, it was a phrase before it was a hashtag, right? So it's just like it, it's the first association, I, I would think. Yeah. Right. Was, All right, let's was, stop making fun of Me Too. For yeah, fucking right. idiots, <laughs> you Me Too oh, idiots. Let's cut all this out. Uh, that, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why. Yeah, that's why I missed. Uh, I, I hope there was a. I wish there was a woman here because I would make the jokes okay. Yeah, Beatrice. Yeah. Uh, we don't even have our robot Beatrice bot. You know, we will bring it back for the next episode. I think we, we skipped it because we got a little trigger happy with yeah. it, but we'll bring it back. We'll we could also just insert Beatrice talking right here about me too. Uh, no. Or we could just pause and add the soundboard here. Okay. Do you have it? No. That is it good? Is it worth it's it? It's not worth it, actually. We'll do it in post. We'll do it in post. We'll do it in post. Totally, just remix this. I haven't said a substantial thing yet. Right. So we it's... haven't asked any interview questions yet. So, uh, yeah. do you oh. have one? Well, when I was, uh, <laughs> when, I was <laughs> when I was at the store and I was buying me some cheese. <laughs> <laughs> to put on my sausage. I was... Uh, <laughs> I, I was picturing uh, sitting here and making fun of you guys, and this is how old I am because I thought uh, Jordan was going to have prepared questions, but I oh, imagined, I've given up completely. Okay, I, I imagined 
taking a piece of paper and crumpling it out. Oh, <laughs> like, that would have been nice. Oh, of course. Of course he's going to use actual real paper. Yeah, we're we're actually slowly, because uh, Jordan has a little bit of a- OCD, ADD, autism. I don't know which it's one it is. all of them. Oh, nice. Um, so... It would be really trendy. funny to fuck with them. I do. <laughs> some episodes I, I do would. have like a structure and a prepared list, but. Uh, yeah, in lieu of a personality. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gabo, let's get to the questions. All right, all right. I'll let, I'll let you have in right. one or two. What is it like to bomb in two languages? <laughs> uh, I've never bombed in two languages at once, which hey. that, that would be, maybe I should try that one time. I was just like. I'll do setup in English and then the punchline punch in Polish, Polish and bomb. Yeah, whichever audience understands uh, less. Um, but I was okay. That's a, s- a stupid question. Yeah, and he's yeah. an idiot. Don't listen. to Next him. question is from Ariel. <laughs> don't. Don't. I was going to answer, but there's nothing interesting to say. I don't know. Also, I think it's harder for me to bomb in Polish, to be honest, because it was meant to be a, a roasty, a roasty know, question, but you didn't take it that way. I don't care. Yeah, and that I, is the best way to take that question because <laughs> now I'm defeated. So yeah. I appreciate that. Okay. Ariel, also, you got one? Yeah, yeah. I also like how I was like, don't listen to him. And you're the one who has to ask the questions in the interview. So <laughs> don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. He's a fucking idiot. He's like part of the podcast. No, uh, no, but we were talking about uh, that like right before the, the Me Too movement. We were talking about uh, <laughs> that that you you've been here. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to just be quiet for a second. Well, I, th- I think that in general, like it is interesting for people. Like the, was part of this podcast is like, I mean, it's pretty much amateur comedians talking about, I mean, although you are a professional now and we do make money I'm off of- I'm a professional stand-up comedian. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, I, I uh, do, yes. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. was Gabo Faliga. Yes, yeah. and uh, I'm, I'm actually less professional than Jordan, which yeah. is because <laughs> I make less money yeah. for sure, yeah. So, um, so in general too, like, like you know, it's not necessarily giving advice or anything like that, but I think in general, it's, it's an interesting scene that there is going on in Warsaw and it's very unique to uh compared to different comedy scenes because it's less likely to happen I guess in English in Warsaw or in Poland in general uh it's not something that people think about and that sort of thing wait so, what's less likely to happen funny jokes uh, no uh, English stand-up comedy or it's it's oh, less okay. thought about by regular yeah, I guess people about like the general uh, general populace? population okay. won't think so. about Poland as a oh there's comedy going on there probably sure, not sure. you mean outside of Poland or just yeah, everybody here even inside of Poland I think it's I just, just people are enough. starting to see that Warsaw there's like comedy happening people right. reach out to me but this is on the internet not like just local so like what i'm saying is that in general like yeah, uh, yeah. people wouldn't necessarily think oh stand up comedy oh yeah that's absolutely happening in poland and of course yeah. it's happening in poland in polish uh but it's happening in english and also no, uh, yeah i'll give you that I, I i'm a little surprised sometimes too at like the a variety of international crowd that we we get sometimes because we were we were just in the Gdansk. We did a, a show for thirty people, and there was like you know every almost every continent represented there in a right. sense. So yeah, and so like so Antar- in Jar- Antarctica. Yeah. Okay. Fair. I said almost. He said God almost. He said almost. He did also. You got to listen. <laughs> you you know what's hard for me? I have a condition. Oh, yeah. Retardism. <laughs> there probably was one guy. There probably was one guy in the freezer. He was just chilling out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's some fish there. Uh, so, so in general, <laughs> this is going to be a nightmare. I can tell. <laughs> no. Yeah. A couple of ADD do you guys, idiots. Do you guys spend a? You edit the show. Or? Ariel edits I, the show. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why. That's why I'm a little bit. More on edge because I listen to there's this cross talk just like this. Oh, there you it's go. a huge, uh, it's a huge problem for him to edit. That's not a huge problem. It's just a lot of time, and uh, it's time listening to Jordan again interrupting. And I'm like, you know, ah, you know who rough. doesn't have any I... time? DJs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get it. Gonna, I don't get it either. I think, I think, uh, it's, I'm torn between. It's because you don't do anything during the day, uh huh, or. Most of you die early. Don't worry, I'll edit this out. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know which. I one. made a joke, but I'm really not sure. <laughs> I'm really not sure not what sure I meant. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know what the punchline means, but, but I know what it is. I'm being extra mean to to Jordan because I just listened to him interrupt for a long time because I edited a podcast day. Yeah. But I apologize, Jordan. That's a it's a mean thing to do during the po- the podcast. I accept your apology. Okay, good. I know you try to make it substantial or something, but you really sh- I think you should not edit unless it's so bad that when there's like you can hear one mic and the other yeah but it's that is that oh, it's fuck. that yeah all right and maybe we could just move I physically further away yeah that's true maybe that would help Let's do that. i would like that too for the smell <laughs> oh, <laughs> i smell great all the time <laughs> jordan <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so <laughs> did you have a question? Because I did. <laughs> I, I did interrupt you, but yeah, I did. I did have. Uh, uh, it was less of a question, and more of a, a kind of like showing uh, who you are as a person for the people who are listening to the this audience. Yes, Jordan, you have a notepad. But I do. I do. I forgot that I did start making notes about questions. Oh, give me that. And then yeah. I gave up. No, I no, spoiled the you bit. Should just, I... You should just read it because I didn't get very far. Do do it. I don't have to talk. Be, how long to times? Times they are a changing is all it says. I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I think I <laughs> you started up. writing a question and then, you, and then you just went to plagiarizing Bob Dylan. Yeah, yeah. Or whoever. So how do you feel about times they are a changing? The song by Bob Dylan and how it applies to stand-up comedy in the last 10 years. Uh, you know, like I said, I like Jews, so I really have no problem with... No, Bob Dylan's uh, cool, I guess, you know, if you're 80 years old. Yeah, what about yeah. Tim Dillon? You like Tim Dillon? He's all right, yeah. I haven't seen too much of his stuff, but he's pretty funny, yeah. How about, all right, so you've done Comedy Central Poland? Uh, yes, I have uh, okay. a couple times. Maybe tell us about that experience. Uh, not great. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, actually, yeah, I would want to know. Yeah. I mean, not to, we can bleep out Comedy Central Poland if you're afraid of the mafia there. Oh, I don't know. I'm really not sure if I'll even be going back there. It's good, nice people. They've treated me fairly well. They don't pay great. And I'm not happy with editing. That's pretty much it. Could you maybe describe it? So go back in time to when you were first considered and going through the process of actually doing it and then come back around to now that you hate them. Like just, you know, don't... You're going to learn nothing because (laughs) the first time I was uh, on Comedy Central, which was called... It's called... Comedy Club now, I guess, and before, because they had a break or something, started again. It was called the uh, Comedy Central Presentuje, and the first couple times they did it, it was in fucking 2011, where nobody was good, everybody was bad, <laughs> including me. Great time to do and, it, and yeah, so it wasn't that hard to to get on there. I already had some jokes, some that I translated from English, some that I you know just developed over the few months, and. Uh, my sister did technically sort of work there as like, I don't know if she was officially hired by whatever the parent company was, was it by comment at the time? It doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, so I guess there's nepotism involved, which really asks, uh, answers your question when it involves all things uh, show business. Nepotism is the best way to go. Oh, for sure. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, I guess I was, you know, I, uh, I was already pr- fairly funny, but not ready for TV. So I actually, um, like, with that said, it was uh, a pretty simple process, you know. I totally know that it's easy to get on there because I've never ever performed in Polish, and they contacted me to perform yeah, for them. Yeah, and I was like, I, I don't yeah, do it in Polish. Also, they they do a bunch of comics in like one series. It's a, it's two or three per episode, and they have you know, I don't know, a dozen episodes or so each season. So obviously, they need a lot of people, and like I said, they don't pay that great it's individually negotiated obviously at this point but yeah uh, yeah a lot of the big comics don't fucking do it anymore because they could go to youtube and well maybe not make more much more money but get way more exposure probably and no censorship and they edit their own stuff so it really makes no sense for them i think is it also actually is it on just tv or just a different audience uh well no it's on see that's the thing is like i can't even I think originally it it premieres uh, just through TV, and then after a while they put it online. But it, they don't use everything; they just use clips. I haven't checked in a while, to be okay. honest. All right, all right. Well, well, let's get because, like, yeah, I mean, we might even edit this out because you might not want to shit on comedy. I don't think I've said anything uh, untoward. Like, I'm I'm pretty open about this, especially money. Like, people don't want to discuss money. I'm like fuck it. I don't. I know there's. Uh, it's a very individual thing, and everybody's out for themselves. But I almost wish there was like some semblance of a comics union sometimes, or like a minimum rate or whatever, because people will fuck you. You know, if they yeah. know you're desperate to perform, and I don't mean Comedy Central specifically right now. I'm just saying anybody organizers, if they know all you want is stage time and you're desperate for it. You know they'll give you the lowest rate possible. I do appreciate. I do appreciate both. Uh, like I do appreciate because I, especially with DJing and moving to a city where I didn't know anything about how much I'm supposed to be get paid and stuff like that. I really appreciated uh, getting information from a fellow DJ. Like there was one Mikey 
who would just be so open and free about the information saying, this is how much this place pays. Yeah. I get paid a little bit more because I've been doing it for a longer mm-hmm. time. So you will be paid a little bit less, but like giving me at least a kind of window sure. of money. It's, it's a very cool thing. I also have the opposite where it was like a really good DJ who was like a Red Bull award-winning DJ who, when I was like booking her because I was uh, in a, like on a show where I needed another DJ, she was like, like I'll talk to them about getting paid. And then afterwards I just asked and it kind of wasn't really my business to ask. She just like, she dealt with the club themselves directly. And she was like, listen, I've been working on this for 20 years. And so where I am in my career kind of has nothing to do with where you are in your yeah, career. Yeah. So like I'll, I'll make whatever I make, but I'm not going to compare myself to you or give you that information. Cause you don't, you don't need it. It doesn't pertain to you. She said it in a much more eloquent, eloquent way. And I appreciated the, how she said that she's an awesome person. And so I kind of liked She did kind of just too. say, it's none of your fucking business. And it's none of your kid. fucking business, but in like a very, very, <laughs> sure. she explained it in a good way. So like, I understand both sides, but I also appreciate being told like, especially for beginners. Like, I think for beginners, it's a good thing to be like, you can get to this point, that'll take you 10 years, but at the beginning, this is how much you can make. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a good yeah, thing to Yeah, because the moment you get very popular, like, there starts to be a huge gap. Obviously, it's all reputation-based. And if you're just doing your own shows, you're just selling tickets, and that's basically how much you get minus all the fucking people in between. But... But yeah, there should be like some minimums, especially when you're like going out of town and people want to pay you less than it takes you to get there pretty much right, and like right. food or whatever. So yeah, it's totally. silly. It extends to a lot of things uh, in comedy, not just like fees for sure, performance, sure. Uh, like venue fees. So in Poland, oh, yeah, yeah. some venues will charge you a lot of money to perform there. Those tend to be the better venues. Other venues are free. So yeah, but that's places above a hundred seats, so I don't have that problem. <laughs> but yeah, no, you're but, absolutely right. Yeah. But for instance, uh, a venue—I won't say the name—that I have a vendetta against that involves lights. Uh-huh. I've brought it up a lot on mm-hmm. this podcast. Uh, do like the venue, but you know, have a lighting guy there. Anyway, uh, they overquoted me, but because Dave, the person who recommended the venue. Uh, to me told me how much he paid I was like how about this because that person paid that and I got a lower rate they just quoted Zinger uh, who was black and I think that's relevant double that rate you and think they charge him more because he's black I, <laughs> I think maybe yeah that's pretty funny he's <laughs> like, like yeah, you're like you're one of those Africans that can afford to move out <laughs> to, out of Zimbabwe. So you better have I, some I fucking think money. Because, I think it's because yeah. he's like not no, like I'm not known, but like that he's yeah, he not, no, not known and no, seems like the kind of person maybe you can take advantage of. They charged him. They, they quoted him fucking double. He reached out to me and was like, "Is this how much for, it costs?" And I was like, "No." Uh, for the venue or for something specific? Venue plus technician. Okay, yeah. which uh, it's still not that much. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that's more of a thing of like we because for instance, even with you, yeah, you, yes, you're not known, but you could at least be like. I've sold this much here. Yeah. This place, this place, so you have some sort of credits. I've shown I can bring people. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, we don't know this guy. Uh, we don't know if we want him here. So we're going to just make a double the amount of what we would usually charge. And if he can't fill it, it doesn't matter. He paid us. I think it's because he's black. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I mean, I kidding? Probably, no, I think yeah, it yeah. could be, I think uh, even unfortunately. I think because he. Maybe this they has just to talk him. to him on the phone, realize how annoying he is. And <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they realize that he's probably going to cancel the show anyway. He's so. a fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Zinger, you still owe me money. <laughs> yeah. I'm throwing you bones by putting you in Harblin, but you yeah. don't deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'll cut that out. <laughs> but uh, but in any case, uh, yes. The <laughs> what, were, what? Be- because uh, in I'm doing a little tour of like the Netherlands, mm-hmm. and half the venues were like it's going to be 300 euros, 1500 euros to perform here, and they're not even that big a spaces for, for a similar size venue for like a hundred to three hundred. Yeah, okay. Well, but yeah, I- I'm getting. Other venues that like have re- comics come in regularly for free. Yeah. So I I booked instead just 
other 100 person venues for free because I don't know, it's, yeah it's weird to me I I don't have that much experience especially with with organizing but uh and in those big rooms I've only done that on like tours with a with a bunch of other comics but it's strange I get it like charging for a theater or whatever that has all of this staff and stuff but if it's just like a club and they're making money on the bar it's like fuck yeah. you H- hold on a second like I'll pay for the technician or whatever. I'm not, unless you're giving me money from the bar, I don't understand why I got to pay, you know, half my ticket. It's, I don't know. And it gives me so much, like, just just a little bit of joy to respond to those venues that quote these ridiculous fees and be like, sorry, I'm doing it somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. That, That, for free. Yeah, as long as you have a choice. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess maybe in yeah. some towns like some cities in in Poland you you might might not have a choice cuz yeah. for a certain size there's only going to be so many places. Yeah, and I think I think in general like I mean it's very good that you also like you talk to all the comedians who are asking and it might be every comedian who asks you about like how your touring is going and how you're doing it and all that kind of stuff. It's good to, I think it's always good to give out information Mm -hmm. about the situation. And so like, it's very commendable that you do that because like, yeah, there's people who hoard information and it does them no good except for they now have the information and that's it. It's not like people will take away from yours. So People approach me like sometimes almost timidly like, can you give me the email of this venue? And I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know because some people, you know, make money. I think they might actually make more money uh, organizing than they do performing, at least uh, some of the Polish comics I know or whatever. And, and they just want to keep that exclusive. Uh, Like, Mm. oh, one guy's fucking doing all the shows in that region and if you even want to perform at a club there, he gets upset about it if you don't go through him, which uh, I say, fuck him. But, Those people will but, not survive, I think. And I don't know. It? They're doing all right, some of them. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, I guess more, it's more the exception than the rule. But yes, yeah, people are secretive about I don't know. People don't want to talk about money, period, I feel like. And that's also like a corporate thing. And like you're always taught that is uh, culturally, you're taught that it's not, um, n- not nice, but like, I don't know. It's just low to talk about money, especially if you're making a lot of it. Yeah. And then there's also the fact of like, I don't know, your, I think, empl- your employer ta- tells you not to talk about your salary, which is oh, fucking illegal anyway. I think I, it's illegal? Mm. In some countries. Absolutely. Oh, no, I mean, if, if, if you're signing a NDA or whatever it is, an agreement that tells you you cannot discuss um, – uh, like pay wages with your coworkers. Yeah. That's not okay. I think that's, it, that, it's not legally binding. I mean, it, it wouldn't hold up in court. It, it, I think it ex- as far as I know, I like you could definitely, <clears throat> you know, if you want to unionize or whatever, you can, and then you will discuss wages. Obviously, so. right. I think I, but I think yeah, it's like some sort of scam to not do that because like no, it the, benefits the employer. Yeah, it, it benefits the employer. Like the, when it comes down to it, the only reason to not talk about money is to is I think you said like. Uh, that it's because I think it's exclusively because, like, if you're making a lot of money, yeah, yeah, then it's exclusively that time that you're. It's like, all right, I don't want to put someone down and make them feel bad, yeah. But that, besides that, like, yeah, it, you you should talk yeah, about. Yeah, people it. also don't want to be like, oh, he's gonna be jealous. I don't want to be judged, but because sometimes there's like people making this different money on the same position with the same experience. And it's like, well, how, who is that really benefiting? It's only benefiting the yeah, employer. Yeah, and even on stage, uh, like uh, how many times I hear heard like someone say, "Oh, I'm broke." That's totally acceptable. But if yeah. someone saying like, "Oh, I made a million bucks la- <laughs> last week or whatever," you don't hear that it's on un- stage. Uncouth or whatever the word yeah, is that I was like, looking for. But in general, like you're spreading information about how to uh, how to create a business for yourself. So I, th- I think it's a great thing to do. I, I, th- I know that with DJing, uh, for instance, like. Um, like I came here to Warsaw and I was started DJing and they will hire you and pay you immediately. They don't, it's not necessarily that, Oh, are you a name? Will you provide us business? They need a DJ and they're going to have a DJ. They sell alcohol and there's going to be people dancing. If you do terribly, then you do terribly. And they're not going to hire you again. And it was just one off night, but like that's their business is not dependent on what that one night because they have many nights where there's DJs. And so, uh, for touring around and you have to pay for a venue. Well, I guess there's certain venues where it's just a theater or it's, they're not going to have any after party a- afterwards. Right. I, I'm not sure because we talked about it with Jordan before where it's like Jordan mentioned it where, I could go somewhere, do a comedy show, and then afterwards DJ party, and yeah. like 
sure, I could do that. It's a lot more work, but at least I won't pay the fee. And then they'll have to pay for the... I'm sorry. I'm just having trouble staying awake. (laughs) 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 It's like, I didn't get enough sleep today for this shit. God damn it. (laughs) No, no. I was making fun of my story. (laughs) Now I realize that you actually didn't get sleep. No. No, I'm I'm making fun fun of you. And uh, earlier I was going to say, who is this actually relevant to? Because there's not many people uh, looking for venues... Uh, above 200 people. I think it's uh, Jordan and uh, uh, nobody else. <laughs> uh, a bunch of other com- <laughs> po- Polish comics. But, say, 100, but, 100 is the sweet spot. But I do, yeah, weeks. but I do appreciate the transparency. It's obviously not a, it's not a default and a given and... Uh, I, I was just interrupting I you because, like, for me, going longer than a few minutes without a laugh or at least an attempt at one, I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck is going on? Why am I here? <laughs> All right, I won't ask about Warsaw then or who you are. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not going to give you any serious answers. I don't know how to. I don't know how to answer a general question about who I am. Who the fuck? Who the fuck knows? I don't. Definitely not me. Uh, <laughs> You're Gabo Philippe. <laughs> yes, yes, but does does my name define? Do you me? have any? Do you have any? If what if my name was Pava, what, would it be different? Pava would be very similar. <laughs> it would be the same shit. Yeah, but I, 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 I bet you my life would be so much more peas. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> what? Yeah, so much more. Peas. No, it would be significantly uh, different. Maybe more peaceful. I a a no. Pavo by any other name would smell like sausage. Yes, Pava was it's close. Uh, has close, sausage close by default. Yeah. Is oh, that your okay. microwave? What's going on? My fridge just decided it's upset. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love smart devices. Still There's so much more convenient. Listen, listen uh, people might be listening to you, probably not at this point, but... Yeah. Uh, Oh, Ar was angry. Yeah, I'm fucking pissed. Man. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> you know what? But you know what? It's not Ar Ar angry. What a snooze fest, no, right? It, it's not. It's not. <laughs> listen, no, see, but at least there's some fucking emotion here. Now. Well, <laughs> it's not direct. It's because I have to fucking edit this and listen to it again. All That's right. what's going on. So <laughs> he's gonna be at his editing station, just, just being like fuming. <laughs> also, I should never edit before I do a podcast because I listen to Jordan just fucking oh, ADD yeah. his shit away and I was just like fuck this man I don't want to do this I no, I'm always pu- putting it off and yeah some uh, uh, when I have to edit and because yeah. Gabo has a podcast which he will now plug yeah it was very it's actually Who very is nice Gabo? we don't even know yet <laughs> it's very nice to uh to be on a podcast that has fewer listeners than mine I appreciate it how it makes many me listeners, feel better <laughs> how many listeners do you have every episode no uh well, I mean the the one we're doing in English, which I'm not sure if that's going to continue happening because we're kind of like uh, everybody seems to be in a different place right now. We did one called "Did You Get That" with with Dave and Better, two other com- comics, and uh, that I don't know that would probably get like a a, hundred, a couple hundred views depending on the on the time. Uh, whereas the Polish one, it, I don't know if anybody cares. It's called Nagrawisz though, and it's been around for a while. I also haven't put out an episode in a few months, but uh, yeah, there's like over eighty of them, and and it really the person getting the uh, the clicks is uh, the guest usually, so it'll be anywhere from a thousand to many thousands. But I, li- I listen to it. That was I, I like that podcast. Like it's like uh, I mean, it's, some of them are pretty. good. Uh, yeah. Some of them are pretty good. Like I, I would listen to it in order to hear Polish mm-hmm. <laughs> and be able to did speak it help? Polish. I remember you were. Yeah, uh, it it did help. It did help a, a little bit. I don't know. I did terribly anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Like, Did you want to finish your DJ story? I'm sorry, Eric. I don't no, fucking remember the fucking DJ story. Fuck about this shit, man. I'm done. I, I, Stand-up comedy as a business where booking venues yourself is a part of it in Europe and that if he DJs also, it flips the model of having to pay for the venue so that he actually gets paid instead of having to pay the venue and that's like a clever thing to do for him. Now, listening to Jordan, you're right. You should have interrupted <laughs> me. My apologies. You can also, you could have just said it that fast. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, but do you have a question? I guess I have a question. Yeah, yeah, go, go. Do, do you have any pet peeves during open mics? During open mics, I'm I'm sure there's plenty, but I, I usually only remember them when I, uh, when I see them. I mean, the, fuck, there's so many things that people do wrong or that just annoy me that are not wrong at all. But I'm like, uh, please pick a few. Uh, we got time. I think you don't have to be anywhere, right? I don't mind. I don't <laughs> mind like hack jokes, but I I guess people do the same things over and over, and it really depends. It just depends on the time, right? It's uh. Uh, used to be in Polish. It used to be Uber jokes about Ukrainians. Uh, you know, when it comes to crowd work, it's obviously like the same questions. But that's fine. That really depends where you go with it. Uh, but 
there's I'm trying to think of one that I've heard so much recently, but there's certain jokes that like you can't even argue, accuse uh, anybody. Of, <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> yeah, bur- burping into the mic. I, I think that might be one, <laughs> unless it's unless it's intentional. It, you know, as long as you kind of know where you're going with it, that's fine. Burping in the mic to get back at you is that a pet peeve? <laughs> no, no, I don't care. <laughs> no, but no, pick, I'm not. Pick a. Pick I'm not angry. I was I was actually going to make fun of you guys a lot more, but it's I'm not feeling the vibe. You're too nice, so I can't. <laughs> I don't know, I man. I'm fucking pissed. <laughs> Are you really? I feel no, great. All right, all right. Okay. No, no, I'm not really well, pissed. I'm let's not. fucking fight then. Let's see what happens. And, <laughs> I don't want and it. Then, You're wearing glasses, man. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's what's stopping you ultimately. Okay. No, I'm not. No, I'm, no. I, yeah, I want to hear I'm, the answer. Actually, to be honest. Uh. No, I can't. I, I wasn't prepared for this question. I don't know. I like Do, people. Next time, who, should we email you twenty questions that you can prepare for? Yes, for all absolutely. Of them? Yeah, go through what, my, number one. What is your name? It'll go through my publicist, and you'll just get an email back, and I'll never even show up. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be honest, like I actually, I am actually interested in your origin in Warsaw because okay. this this podcast is revolves around Warsaw, and like I'm, I'm yeah. interested in like. Why, like, yeah. you have a Polish family. I, I thought you, you, you were straight up American. Of, okay. So, like, I thought you were straight up American yeah, we're because all you're 100% Polish, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Except for him. I'm not. No, all. no, I mean, 0%. sorry, my family is. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, like, in that sense, like, uh, like how, your life in America versus Poland, if you even had much of a life in America, I don't fucking know. <laughs> you told me once, and I was, I was drunk. just hanging out in the gutter, and <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, "Fuck, maybe I should go back." Seems it's better over there. So rewind fifteen years, and then tell yeah. us: Do you think the times they are changing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, the time they are changing. <laughs> Got That's- it. I really hate Bob Dylan. Do you really? Yeah, that guy sucks. Like, he just he just sounds like it, it's not that I hate him. My dad loves him, and I hate my dad. <laughs> no, no. Sometimes Bob Dylan, <laughs> Bob Dylan uh, will pop up in a movie, like in the soundtrack, and I'll be like, "Is this like a SoundCloud musician? Like, just you know, just, just like a no name, someone funny, who can't yeah. sing?" I feel like uh, Bob Dylan might be one of those people that's. Just got all the credit for a bunch of other people. Like there's this whole fucking folk scene and all of a sudden, uh, I don't know, Bob Dylan sort of channels that and he becomes a star for like, some other reasons. Maybe. Like the early famous, like the 80s comedians who did like all the easy stuff. Yeah. And their specials were just like an hour of the easy stuff. Yeah, yeah. and for some reason we still see Jeff Dunham. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if he was around in the 80s. You he's might probably, be a redneck as Jeff Foxworthy, but yeah, still. Similar, similar idea. Old, but. And I think, I do think, no, I, I mean, I'm, I, I think Bob Dylan in general is just like, I hate his voice mm-hmm. and that's all it is. I, yeah. I think musically I hate Bob Dylan. I think Bob they're Dylan. pretty good songs, but um, yeah. I think he, in, t- in, in general, like I've seen interviews with him where he's like a 20 year old kid and saying super intelligent shit. And like, I'm like, whoa, fuck. I, so as a human being, I don't know much about Bob Dylan except for the few interviews I saw. I thought, like he is a smart dude and he was especially smart when he was a kid but like musically that's all I'm talking about really in my mid 20s I made a very brief go at being like a singer songwriter musician and like giving that a shot and I was very self conscious about my vocals and I would ask people like okay what do you think of the vocals and the worst feedback would always be well, you know, Bob Dylan was famous. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a direct Fuck. diss. Direct diss. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not the best. But you don't have like a nasally voice or anything like I, that. I've gotten better. Okay, though. yeah. And they were just basically saying like, oh, wait, I don't like your singing. They but, were saying, you know. the, but the lyrics are good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, uh, back to Gabo Feliga right, and his origin I don't know, story. I'm trying to briefly summarize. I just don't, yeah. I, I don't, don't think, uh, I don't you think don't it's like going to be self-indulgent. I, I don't... I try not to be, I guess. I mean, it's it's kind of hilarious to say that to a comic. It's like, you know, like being self-indulgent, right? And going no. on stage. And <laughs> no, I just like a hundred people to look at me. Talking about yeah. yourself for 20 minutes for no apparent reason, uh, which is, but yeah, I, I guess I don't talk about like myself. Does strictly, it make you uncomfortable? Strictly speaking that much. A little bit. I don't like uh, boring, arrogant people or people who talk about themselves all the time and interrupt and like uh, or don't listen. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think so. Not from my experience. But in any case, um, yeah, yeah, I'm very self conscious, so I try not to come off as a dick. I don't. I don't 
I am a dick. I just don't want to be perceived well, as one. Well, that's what I'm. That's um, what I'm saying specifically. I I totally. But get no, it. I could tell. You, I could briefly summarize. I guess uh, uh, my situation at the time when I, because I, I I lived in five in the U.S. for five years as a kid. Well, that wasn't my choice. We just moved out in like ninety, which is kind of strange in the middle of the transformation in in Poland, which probably should have fucking left in nineteen ninety. Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. Wow. Okay. 1990. That's when I was born. <laughs> I know. Uh, and we probably should have just stayed and done some fucking corrupt uh, business practices and been millionaires by now uh, because that was a great time for it. But no, we moved to Chicago originally. Then, like, my dad got a job in Dallas or something. Like, we lived in the suburbs of Dallas for five years. And then, for s- several reasons, we moved back to Poland. And then I didn't. Um, Obviously, that was uh, traumatic and probably <laughs> being a, a foreigner, despite uh, being white, uh, you know, has its downsides. But I did learn a, learn uh, English well, fairly well. <laughs> I learned English real good. <laughs> I, I got that good English now. All right. And uh, and I'm probably Americanized beyond reparation, beyond <laughs> uh, fixing, because it's like yeah. in, my, in my head forever. Um and then I didn't really go back to the States for longer until my 20s, which is I dropped out of college here and went to Seattle to basically just uh, be independent and just work there, do fucking shitty jobs and just see what it's like uh, to live on your own and all that. Because it was much easier for me to to do that having a, a regular job than here. And that was basically it. And I stayed there for another five years. What's the shittiest job you had? Um, I guess uh, probably like uh, dishwasher. Mm. That's I don't think I went below that. <laughs> I did have a friend There's not who worked much, at a. What's below dishwasher? Well, I had a friend who uh, worked at like a downtown uh, peep show booth place. Uh, so you know, he was the peep show. <laughs> and I'm, I, that that's a better been job. Yeah, that's a better job. I would have. I would have liked to see see that clientele. He was fat and bald, so I don't know how. What kind Stavros of, Halkius is, uh, is hot. Yeah, now. I guess he was. He wasn't fat enough. He didn't have as much swag. He was a, <laughs> he was a good guy though. I guess this guy Matt. But yeah, they had a giant vat of alcohol where they would put uh, the coins that people dropped. So you can imagine what working uh, that, <laughs> that place Jeez. is like. This is old school too. like Because like, uh, you know, I don't know if those, how many of those places are still open. Obviously, I mean, a lot of people go, go there and jerk off, but a lot of them would just come to smoke crack. So you had all kinds of, all kinds of <laughs> he, he was the doorman? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, he was. He was like, in the states, the attendant or whatever. That's yeah, in still, Seattle, downtown Seattle. That's yeah. a people-facing job. So oh, by yeah. default, above dishwasher. Uh, it, it's, you're saying it's above dishwasher. Yeah, All right, so. face it, fair enough. Yeah, I didn't have I didn't have to clean cum off any plates, so I, I don't you know. know of. It just gets go- <laughs> okay. you, don't, you don't know what's on the plate. It's a family restaurant, but all right, fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, man, I think you might have gotten paid better that, that now that you mentioned it. Yeah, I was a pizza delivery guy. I'm trying to think of my lowest. Really? Job. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's like a, the best sex job in the world. For a mm-hmm. tall guy, yes. maybe a <laughs> best right. sex job. Yes. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, the porn. Okay, yes, it qualifies it. as sex work. Yeah, In reality, to... it was before like Google Maps and stuff. So just me getting lost. How old were you? I was God, nineteen. Okay, so you could have. I was had also sex. shipping and processing at sixteen. I just opened packages all day. Is that below dishwasher? It's also I a sex know. job. Yeah, I also had like a warehouse job where we'd put little fucking screws into a baggie. So I That's don't know. They're, below they're both awful. Yeah. No, the dishwasher job was actually kind of fun because I met a lot of people and stuff. So yeah, it's a restaurant job. It's fun shit, probably. Yeah, my, yeah, my they restaurant let us drink on that job and stuff. I'm, I'm weird. Wait, wait, wait. What? You had a restaurant oh, job? Oh yeah, I was a I was a waiter at a wine bar and like upscale restaurant. My first job was I was a waiter at a retirement home at 15 years old. And the old ladies would like pinch my butt and I would have to clean up vomit Ooh. and stuff. And that's bad? And I would hide I would, <laughs> I would hide in the uh, the closet and eat rolls. I and when did that. you come out the closet? <laughs> hey, hey, we're working hey. on it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh. Uh, 2027. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus. All right, I didn't realize this was going to be. So, all right. Uh, 
But uh, <laughs> back I'm, to still I'm still trying to think of pet peeves, and I can't think of any really good ones. Very overly, one. overly long introductions. Maybe that's what... Listen, he only asked you to say his own. <laughs> I only ask questions to talk. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> uh, someone hiding behind the mic stand? Sure, yeah, yeah. People that are not aware of like the stage and the mic is is, but that's just really a beginner thing for most people. But we had yeah. we had we have we have a comic who uh, used to hide behind the mic stand with the mic mic out, but stand oh, yeah, just there. People who hold the mic way hold the too mic. far. That's that's one that it gets me. Holding Unless the, you're screaming, which holding the mic, but the mic stand is still st- in front of you is, uh, and I think they listen to our podcast and now they move now they move the mic stand because we talked for fucking twenty yes. minutes in one of fucking our first episodes about successful yeah, changing podcast. lives, yes, changing absolutely. lives. But, uh, one now, open mic right now. Well, why are you angry at the open micers? I'm not angry at them. It's a pet peeve. It's <laughs> why just do you like, hate them, Jordan? Why do you hate them, Jordan? I love. Are you all jealous open mic-ers. of their freedom? Yeah, used to be one very, very recently. Yeah. In fact, I still go to open mics all the time. So, in, in a way, yeah, all I mean, comedians why, are always open micers. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, why does that bother me? Yeah. Why does it bother you? It doesn't make me angry. It's just like this is such a fucking obvious thing that that I would prefer people not do. Yeah, but like for certain people, it's not obvious, and then it's it, it's like I, I remember being asked at an interview question. They were like, okay, if you hate someone, what do you do at the job? And I remember being like, I don't hate people. The worst part of a job is when someone's brand new and they don't know as much as you and you can get annoyed. But it, like when you when you talk to them, you you teach them a little bit and it's okay. You just get, get over it. it. I'm, I'm not annoyed at them so much as I just, I want to get up there and move the mic stand out of the way. Oh, I see. You know? So it's annoyed at the performance. Yeah, not at them. Yeah, people are so nervous early on. I think that they have no, they're not even aware or thinking about that. You know, I have a pet peeve. It's something Ariel does. Yeah. Where Ariel's like, Where are you from? And they say, Oh, Kentucky. And he says, Me too. And goes the next person, Where are you from? And they go, Oh, I'm from uh, Zimbabwe. And he says, Me too. Like he's a fucking. Disney World tour guy. <laughs> <laughs> you still do that and I hate it. Is, At least stop is, doing that. Is that what they do? <laughs> when I was nine, I they saw a Disney yeah. World tour guy doing that. And at the time I was like, just mir- that's hacky. Just, mir- <laughs> just mirroring like salespeople is like, I'm obsessed with me too. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Me three. I don't care. I'm, 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 the, still, I'm yeah. the one that does me three. I okay. feel like you guys need couples counseling already. You're just having, you haven't even I, been doing this very long and I think I, I think, sense some tension. Yeah. Jesus. Beatrice diffuses that by saying random shit. You yeah, know what? Okay. You know what it really is? It really is the editing that I did today where I'm like, I did so I did like five hours of editing for a one hour podcast and I was like it, it just is that. It's not really Jordan's fault. And so that's why I really apologize to him. And, and I accept that apology. And I also apologize for what? I'm not sure. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just so. whatever, whatever you think I'm doing wrong. So, there was a gleam of that. hope in his eye. It was. Like, it was. He knows what he did wrong. No, he doesn't. 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 He, and I used to be like, he's not autistic, and I'm like, yeah, he's autistic. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. It's a spectrum. <laughs> yeah, it's a rectum. Yeah. And I'm all the way over here. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Clearly, you're not. Uh, yeah, you're highly functioning. If anything, so. <laughs> yeah. I think I actually do think, yeah, it's tough. It's a tough, it's a tough situation. But with that said, <laughs> so, we don't know you yet. Well, we what do you want to know? Any- Ask me a fucking question. How God has damn it. stand-up comedy in Warsaw changed over the last ten years? Oh just, my God! Pre and post you. pandemic. Oh, I'm just gonna no, leave, Jordan. Jordan, listen. We we need to know the ori- origin before we know how it changed. Like what comedy spider? Well, because bit like Gabo Feliga, well, and that's- when it comes came down to it, like if. Uh, like Gavo's been here for a long time, and like you, you saw it's impossible. It's like a, asking a fucking uh, you know junkie on a corner that's been standing how'd there panhandling. Yeah, how'd how'd you get here, man? Or and then you ask him, is like, hey, how does this p- place change over the past <laughs> ten years? He doesn't notice. He doesn't fucking see the difference. Well, the price has gone up slightly. Yeah, yeah. That's red tops <laughs> went to blue tops, and then that's it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's it changed pretty quickly. It is kind of strange to because there's no parallel in a sense in like American or any comedy or any place that's more established or had it for a long time. We sort of, you know, like Filippo's sort of saying is it is a little bit of cultural colonialism in a sense, and all these like people that were doing Polish com 
comedy of sorts, cabaret, or whatever the fuck before. They're like, oh, what is the difference? Uh, fuck you. You think you're stand up? Uh, we did a long time ago. Some, you know, we were also doing solo monologues or whatever. So I think it was just a, I don't know, a group of younger comedians, uh, including myself, who were like, I want to do stand up because these are the people I mo- modeled myself on or like right. that are familiar to me. I'm just inspired by American stuff instead of other Polish stuff. And, okay. Uh, Do you notice actually and, then? Oh, sorry. And the money came in way too quick. There are people got way too famous in the first, not in the first five years, but like the five years after that, it's kind of crazy. Like how some people blew up. So there's, it's, it's weird to even compare it to anything. Cause I don't know what, what, what that is. It's, it's, it's like startups that get no fucking money for no reason. All of a sudden. <laughs> okay. Okay. So more specifically when you first started, uh, did you notice it was bad when we first started? Everything was bad. Everything was bad. It was fun, but it was bad. Yeah. But do you notice the audience now is mm-hmm. better? Yeah, I would say. Yeah, I would say they're a little more why sophisticated. Or maybe I wouldn't use that many syllables to describe <laughs> them. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, they're a little bit more aware of of comedy, even if it's just watching all the Polish comics that have come through. I mean, it has been over ten years at this point, I guess. Uh, people, gen, audiences in general still don't really give a shit. Like they don't care if somebody steals jokes or not. They just want to have a good time. Uh, I think when it comes down to it, like we obsess over all these things, and a lot of people really don't care about the shit we think about. But uh, yeah, they're more aware. There's more variety, so people have like you know their preferences now. They just don't go to any old comedy show as much. Like you used to just do a stand-up show and people would like the first uh, couple of years we we did there were there were shows that were just packed like people would uh, be sitting on the walls and they would not be able to get in because they were just excited i think about this sort of new thing that was happening now they it's more likely i think for people to go see specific comedians or at least have a little bit of idea what what they like is there a big difference between a lot of fucking motherfucking fuck jokes uh, and talking about uh, Uranus, curva. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, a lot of that. Lot, that's necessary. and oh, oh my god, my pet peeves are from fucking com- internet comments. That's my fucking pet peeves. There's people writing, "Why do you have to curse in your comedy? Why you got fucking? You can't do jokes when I curse." So weird. Do you do any it's, jokes about Jesus at all? Oh, <laughs> there's always a comment about cursing for un- beneath every video, and it's I still don't quite get it. Now what? But do they write kurva? So they're the ones actually swearing online. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that is forever. So much that is funny. Yeah, yeah it's forever. Like, <laughs> it's written down. kurva Yeah, it's why are you cursing some other? I will say I've only I've I went to a Polish comedy show, and to me it just sounded like kurva 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 kurva. Just yeah, it was, it was pretty saw. continuous. I don't know who you saw, but it's also very... you don't speak Polish, and the only word you know is kurva. That's so. true. That's yeah. true. That's probably why <laughs> it jumps <laughs> out at you. And also, some people use it, as, you know, like a comma style, or, or when they don't know what to say, especially at an open mic or something. You now, might... now, I like I mentioned this last time that like I, I actually I did my first. Uh, open mic in Polish, yeah. and only because I was doing. Oh. I'm gonna maybe do the the one you don't want to do the Comedy Central. Oh, sure. Polish one, maybe. Uh, but I you did notice. I did notice. Thank you. I will try maybe. But I did notice that it was a huge difference between the audience there than an English audience. Just because, first of all, they gave me a lot of leeway. It was my first time as a stand-up in Polish. And I had jokes that I knew would work, so I did well. But, like, do you see a difference between, and did you see a difference between, back in the day or even now, Polish stand-up or English stand-up when you're doing it in Warsaw or in Poland at all? Mm -hmm. I don't remember when the first English open mic or or show I did it was in, uh, in in Poland. I mean, in Warsaw. I don't remember what how long that was before my first uh, uh, shows in Polish here. So, because there's always something going on, but it, I think it took a while. Uh, there's definitely an an uh, a difference. It's hard to fucking pinpoint. Obviously, it, it depends where or you something. are. Yeah, it's just some. There's a difference. There's something. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like a specific. I mean, you might like, even say the times there are changing. Yeah, exactly. Hey. <laughs> no, Holy I mean, shit! You, you know, predict the future. <laughs> there's definitely a, a different vibe when it's just uh, more foreign people or like a significant amount of people from not from Poland. But also, even if it's like mostly Polish people, it sort of seems like 
they're more willing to laugh. I don't know. When it's more Polish people. Uh, no, yeah, when it's when it's Polish people at an English show rather than at a Polish show. It feels like they're a little more open or something. I don't know. But maybe that's just the general vibe of English language audiences that I get. And I sort of, I tend to prefer that. But also I have, it's easier for me to like just bullshit and improvise in English. And I think I do feel a little more comfortable with those references and uh i don't know some people say i'm better in english so it's I, I, that's all might also be just my perspective i realize that also it's like a it's it is a in a way it's a dumb question it's asking you to be like generalize this whole population because like even what you're saying reminded me of like when i was working in a restaurant the like always Canadians would be like, oh, Americans, oh, dumb Americans or whatever. But the absolute best people who would come to the restaurant were Americans. However, that's a specific type of American. They're going. They know where Canada is. So they, <laughs> It's up. That's it's a up. small subset and already. That's a small subset already. And so they are traveling and not only traveling to Europe, but like actually just going north to go check out this country that they really don't need to see. Yeah, that nobody really yeah. cares about so they, unless they need to. So there's some curiosity with them. They're much kinder. They were tipped better and all this kind of stuff. And so I could say, Americans are better at blah, blah, blah. But really, it was a specific subsect of Americans. Yeah, like occasionally I'd get the impression that Polish people at English shows are laughing more because they just want to show that they know English and you know understand the jokes, which is that's probably rare, but I'm sure it's happened a, a few times. Uh, and also the early English shows were, I would say, much different for the most part because there just seems to be a lot more uh, foreigners now and or from m more different places, from varied places, I would say. And so so for me, that's good. I prefer that, you know. It's like I'm always saying, which is kind of stupid, but if I, I want to I do a joke about black people or a racism joke, I'd prefer if there are black people there than yeah, yeah, doing yeah. it to an all-white audience. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I, f yeah. I felt I did that recently where I was like an open mic and... I was gonna do a black joke, and then amateur mistake. I mentioned that I was like, ah, I was gonna do a racist joke, but there's no <laughs> black people here. And mind you, it went yeah. over well, but I was still like, yeah, it's way better to. I mean, I'll only do racist jokes to a a friend who isn't a white. That's that makes more sense. Like I'm not gonna do it to a, to Jordan because I get it. I'll but the way you, but the way you put it, it sounds like if I see a black guy, I'm telling some motherfucking racist funny. jokes. Ain't oh. it funny how you're broke? No, <laughs> no, I'll, yeah. no in unless sense, it's, unless it's just one one guy at the show. Which sometimes then I'm like, I don't know if I even want to. Yeah, I'm not gonna address just that. one guy at the show, like. One black guy. One black okay. guy. Sorry, no, one guy. guy. Sorry, if yeah. it's Tim, I'll make fun of Tim. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah. when, I was, when I was back in Toronto, that's one thing that actually struck me. And it, I remembered it kind of by living there. It's like, it's like because racism is not a real thing, I would say. Although, of course, there's... You think all, racism is not where, a real where thing? Where in Toronto? In Toronto. Okay. Because it, it's so multicultural that like, it's ah. like you would have to be really stupid to be uh, racist. And so... Uh, so Everyone on stage. Systemic racism. Let's talk about yeah. it. <laughs> but, well, this isn't America. But ra but in general, like, seeing every single comedian make some racist joke, like, like with unapologetically, just basically, just doing racist jokes to the point where I was, like, uncomfortable. I was like, oh, yeah, this is Toronto. I forgot how non-racist this city is. And so it's... It's like the the thing that some certain comedians need where it's like, oh, we n understand you're joking. Like, we need that sometimes to be like, oh, okay, it's just a joke. That we are, we're not actually racist or homophobic or whatever. Like, in Toronto, it's kind of known that these people, it would be really stupid for them to be actually racist. Yeah, Canada's not racist. Even your prime minister is black. Yeah. That was just that one photo. <laughs> no, it was a few photos. And it was Indian. And by the way, that's racist of you because he was Indian. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, he was is, is trying to be Indian, Indian I guess. Or, I don't know. Sorry, he was like, black well, face. It was I Indian mean. face. He was Indian sort of face dressed, is not a thing. As far as I remember, he was sort of dressed like uh, Jasmine's father from Aladdin. So <laughs> exactly. I so that's not even Indian. That's like uh, Persian yeah, or something. Is it Arabic? Okay. <laughs> all right. So my bad. I, I'm also racist. <laughs> yeah, we're all we're all racist here. <laughs> but yes, no, it, it's, it, no. It's not that Canada isn't racist. I've heard many racist things in Canada. I grew up in. A I'm talking about. I'm talking about specifically in Toronto. Uh, when you go there, like if you're living, if you're living there, you would have to be crazy to even notice. 
different skin colors when you're walking around because it would just overload your brain, your racist brain, I guess. And so you would just be doing that stuff and like you would you would be walking around and just being like black guy, Indian guy, Asian guy, and you'd be just stupid. Whereas here, because there's, I mean, it's more multicultural than it used to be, but I definitely have done it myself where I'm walking around when I first moved here and it's all white people and then I see one black guy and I'm sure, like, yeah. oh, I wonder what he's doing here. And I'm thinking about <laughs> – yeah. The fact that he has a different skin color than me, and I'm like, oh shit, that I didn't never used to do that. Just to back that up, because my high school was like a third black, a third Hispanic, a third white, just very integrated to the because on purpose, because North Carolina had this whole busing thing where they made it integrated. Uh, and yeah, it was just like if you spent all day being like black, Hispanic, it, like then it would be a waste of your mental energy, and they just become people. But then I went to a college that they just was, become people. Yeah, they're just people. Sounds very They're racist. just people, you know? They just become just people, no people as opposed to what they Not used to bla- be. Yeah, which is uh, an other. In your mind, uh, yes. And then I went to a college that was almost completely white. And then if I would see a black person, it would, just, it would register in my brain. Like you're talking about like, oh, that person is different than a person I usually see. And But when you're in, in an integrated society, you don't feel the way at all. So that's... Yeah, I mean, you've never been in an integrated society because you're in the U.S., so I don't think that really applies I was in a mic- I was in a little micro-bubble yeah, okay. of, uh, of No, I was going to say, yeah. it was, but even in the school, like uh, the, the elementary school or whatever, it, yeah, or middle? Uh, high or, school. Oh, high school, sorry. Uh, and the fact that they're bust in for is a it, purpose also. Is it really? No, no, no. It's the U.S. is extremely racist, but I'm saying this... Part of what makes Poland so racist is because there are so few yeah. of uh, whatever minority of group. That. Of that, right? <laughs> of them, pointing, of the pointing his feet. Digging a <laughs> Jesus hole. Christ. There, there are no, so, but there are so even few, I'm still starting to feel uncomfortable. So, 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 <laughs> so few people that are black, Asian, whatever, that uh, yeah. they be automatically become the other. But I was just going to say, is that, does that apply? Did it really apply even in the school or especially outside of it? Like, do kids hang out uh, with each other, go to each other's houses, even though they're I was on a rugby team that was like half black, half that's white. Still and or, I, and that's black still an organized activity within the school. I'm right. saying like, does it does it transfer to anything outside yeah, of do it? Yeah, you, do you hang out with, do you go home with a, your best yeah. friend is black or whatever? My best friend was white because he's a, was a person. <laughs> <laughs> I like, no, no, I like no, your no. attempt. No, no, I like but, like, attempt. but I did after school hang out with black people and that's... Uh, what it I find that very helpful as an experience, like what yeah. you're talking about. Because if I think if I didn't have that, now I know I how to roll be, a blunt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I wouldn't <laughs> be like racist, uh, but yeah, because I you would know, definitely be more internally <laughs> a little more internally keep. prejudiced just because I wouldn't have had as many experiences with. Uh, sure, I, yeah, yeah. it's a, I mean, uh, I yeah, I don't want to. A lot of people need that in Poland. That's for sure. I mean, yeah, yeah. So it's, like exposure, it's exposure. It's exposure. It's exposure therapy. I mean, yeah. I think. I think though, it's it's beyond just like oh, you see, you hang out with skin colors and things like that. It's more like <laughs> skin you hang out with skin colors. Hanging out in yeah. the Pantone section. <laughs> this is, this uh, is my black skin suit. <laughs> yeah, and so you, so like I, I just think it's like a, it, it's. I mean, when even the way you, I mean, and I'm not knocking what was going on they're they're trying to like correct a history in america and so like doing things like you know integrating different people from different cultures and different skin colors into a school although uh, absolutely canada had a fucking a bunch of racist shit and like my hometown was mostly white and i heard lots of racist shit from my hometown but it because of the history there's a specific type of racism that i would hear uh, or that would, I would associate with Americans. And so like, so it's kind of like, uh, because I didn't have that kind of looming history over my head, I was free to kind of feel whatever way I want to. Oh, I love Snoop Dogg. Oh, he's my role model. He's a black guy. I don't think that oh, black people are different because he's the coolest or whatever. And I'm not thinking, oh, shit, well, like years ago in my country, blah, 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 blah. And that's not your fault or in any way. Jesus. Uh, so that's not your fault or anything like that. I'm not saying like Wait, that. who's listening to us? What the fuck was that? That's my, hey, Google, but that's not her voice. That's a random man's voice. I, so I don't know. Hey, Google, say something to me. No, I'm just creeped. See, that's that's her voice, right? So I don't know what. what oh, weird. 
Hey, Google, shut up. <laughs> she listens you're to rude. that. God, <laughs> you're not going to make it through the revolu- the robot revolution, man. You're just going to yeah, we're all be eliminated robots, quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all I was saying before Google interrupted me, but uh, all I'm all I'm saying is like uh, there. I think with everything, with America, with Canada, with Poland, it's different racist type types. It's not even yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's not just, oh, I see a, like what I was saying even about seeing a black guy on the street being like, oh, that's a black guy. I wonder what he's doing here. That's a, that's thinking about race and it's a specific type of thinking about race. But like Poland has a different racism than America would have completely. Mm-hmm. And it's not the same just no, because no. you see a different person and you recognize that they have a different color of skin does not mean uh, it that racism is the same in both places. Because in yeah, Poland, you just charge someone double for a venue. Yeah, when they're black. yeah, but like, yeah, but there's an America, and they'll kill you <laughs> if you're black. Because <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, cops yeah, will. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's very shallow, it, and it's especially like, yeah. black people. Yeah, and let's and move on important. to comedy. I think. I mean, yeah, we're I, know, to comedy. I, I think just to just to put a button on this point, like to to kind of like uh, protect Poland in a way of the racism is like Poland has had a long, long history. And in general, I would say with Poland, the racism that I saw, and I've said this to many people, is like, it's kind of like the little child with a, like, oh, I'm scared of the boogeyman under my bed. And all you have to do is show them that there's nothing under your bed. And then they're like, oh, okay, no, never mind. So it's like, like, but what about sh- those shows them, over there? Yeah. Show them that they're not, they're not, it's okay, they're not people. No, what no, about no. the Arabs living next door? Yeah, yeah. No, just show That's them not what I'm saying, though. That it's not a boogeyman, it's just Jeff, She's he's mom's friend. And he's part of the family now. <laughs> well, it's not even, no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Jesus. I'm talking about like a specific, like intense thing about racism. Yeah. So yeah. like, so all, all I was saying is that basically it's like, it's a thought in their head put on by America's racism. Yeah, yeah definitely. There's definitely some the- American important involved. And then all the stuff before that, you know, because obviously the Europeans kind of, uh, created uh, anti-black racism, especially so. So you got to remember that. It's a, it's a- we were always fascinated with like the English and the French and uh, maybe the Italians or something. So you know, you take that into account whenever creating like cultural uh, standards or, or views of race in in Poland. Like if you if you go back and read Shinkevich, who used to be uh, the the I guess one of the number one authors in uh, amongst like school curriculum and stuff. Uh, there's a story about these kids going to the fucking African uh, desert, and there's plenty of uh, racism and like stereotyping in that book. You know, even right. though people had no idea about any of that stuff. So. I th- uh, yeah, I think, and I would c- say it's very English in that in that sense because he's like it's influenced the cur- by colonial colonials. I, I guess this is like kind of like a maybe. You- with what you're with what you're saying, I think this is like we are. You're right. We're getting off topic a little bit, but in general, I think the cure for racism in America and even in Canada, uh, besides Toronto, I would say, but like, is not necessarily I, the cure for racism. What's raci- the cure? I want to know the we cure should- for racism in Poland yeah. specifically is education. Is just a lack of ignorance. Whereas the cure for racism in po- in uh, America and perhaps other parts of Canada, it's just moving all the is, black people to a different island. It's just exactly, and yeah, that's all. It, no, is I wish we could go back in time. We really should tell MLK, you know, about the cure because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think he fully understood it back is, then. Is, Jesus, there's no way to fucking. I'm fucking out of here. I'm fucking, let him say, but, let him say the cure. But why are you trying to make like such a serious point? I don't understand what. Oh. Do you think somebody's right. going to learn from this? Right. Now, now that racism is solved. <laughs> uh, Gobble, he was talking for fucking five minutes. I've been very patient. <laughs> I've been us, very patient. Tell us about your first open mic set. Uh, well, yeah, this was in, in Seattle. It, it was a surprising to begin with because I was like, oh, you have to pay to be at an open mic? And also, like, you get... You had to pay? Yeah. yeah. How much? I don't remember. It was something silly, maybe like five dollars or something like half the cover, the usual cover. But yeah, you you have to pay, and I think you get priority if uh, if you bring people or whatever. So all those like kind of shitty 
uh, rules that a lot of comedy clubs have. Just, um, just like I have this image in my head of like of a of a birthday clown. <laughs> yeah, just, just something like just the, that level of entertainment. Sort of. I mean, this is actually a pretty good com- comedy club. You could, you know, like see Doug Stanhope there or whatever. But it's like, did he have to pay five dollars to perform? <laughs> did he have to pay? I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> all the same rules for everybody. Otherwise, no, no fucking comedy. Uh, no, I actually didn't go to see much there. I just went to a few, like th- literally three open mics there. My first one was okay. It was decent. It was hacky comedy, but I got laughs, which was surprising to me. I had no idea why I was even. Uh, I didn't think I was like really, I had this moment of panic, uh, like maybe the day before or something. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? What, what makes me think that I could even be funny or do jokes? What am I going to talk about? You know, you didn't have anything did. written even the day before? No, no, I, no, I had, I, I had ideas and stuff. Uh, I had a few things written down. I don't think they were, they weren't fleshed out or anything. Just was your like, whole set about the just, solution to racism in the US <laughs> yes, and Canada? Yes. And they had to throw me out after 10 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> but but no, it was I did five minutes or whatever it was and and it was fine. I opened with like some shitty, oh, it's my first time joke. So, you know, I'm gonna finish early. Uh something that oh, that's one that's one open mic joke that everybody does and probably shouldn't. Um and it was fine. I don't know. And then I talked to some of the comics, and but I, I wasn't treating it seriously at all back then. So I would say it was a pretty good experience, but it was a very small crowd, mostly comics, or at least at the second one, it was like at least half the audience were comics. So, you know, it was a little sobering as well. <laughs> I wonder if mildly the psychology of that you're paying to perform, it's almost like you're the customer and that the pressure is a bit off. Like uh, you don't that, have to like do anything for anyone. Like if it's a bad show, like you're saying look, it, I fucking paid. You're and saying it, it's like relieving for the comedian as the less res- responsibility. Some or? some comedians like uh, Beatrice famously uh, is anxious about charging money for shows because people who have higher expectations. I think it's not necessarily true. So if, for instance, someone like Beatrice, if she had to pay to perform, I think she would feel more free. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I see. to just well, I mean, do I, I could understand that you know, a paid show versus a a free show. I'm definitely, I'm usually more, even if I'm better prepared at a paid show, I'm I'm more relaxed at an open mic. So I might actually sometimes be funnier or come up with something better on the spot, but uh, or just like a develop a joke. But um, I don't know. Fortunately, I've only ha- had had to do that those couple times. I've never had to pay to perform and I refuse to so I wait, wait, some, wait there is there are shows where I you think pay to perform his first open I mic think in there's Seattle. quite a few comedy clubs it's the ones that that get a lot of people wanting to go on stage I think that's one also obviously it's to stay afloat and make money they have all those you know all those fucking two drink minimums for cl- uh, customers as well and stuff but um, yeah I think it's also to maybe discourage people who are I don't know there's too many of them and they're not serious about it I'm not sure but I don't know if they're going away from that, but I've definitely heard that practice at a lot of, from a lot of places. I met someone recently, and she was like, what do you do? And I was like, I'm a stand-up comedian. And she said, don't you have to pay to do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So some people still conceptualize that At a certain level, way. you almost kind of do. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're like, you end up, you might end up losing money or whatever if you're, if you're not, you know, selling out enough tickets. And so Comedy is the most expensive job I've ever had. <laughs> some people do. I, I do think that I, that... that that business model is like a losing business model because the yeah. quality people will, even if they perform well, then it's like afterwards they'll be resentful. I don't know. They're not, you know, as long as it's accepted, it's, it just keeps going. It's, Would you pay to perform now? No, no. Yeah. I just said, you don't listen. I just said. <laughs> I I'm, also <laughs> have ADD. I know. I've, yeah, it's I, a, have, it's I have this wonderful time with both of you yeah. with ADD. <laughs> I've never seen Ariel this angry in a podcast recording. Yeah. He, is a, he is a little bit red. Or this, know. or this much like MLK Jr. I'm, I don't, I don't actually, <laughs> I don't actually want to fight. So I'm just, I'm, I got to stretch first. I'm not ready. There's, I'm there's never, not enough, I'll never fight. Uh, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not much of a fighter. Nor, nor am I. I'm not um, a fighter. But uh, no, no, I would never pay to perform now. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, but like. Uh, Technically, I have done it because, like, I'll sometimes I'll lose money on a show, or like they they paid me so little in the early years that you know uh, that I end up p- 
paying for it through expenses, but but not directly to the I fucking th- club owner. I think if if I was just in a random city and that was the only way I could get up, I would still yeah. probably just. I mean, if I was in New York, York or something, to get some and that was somehow required or whatever, yeah, maybe, but not here. Not no, not here. I would be like, what's wrong? Well, here I would just. Yeah. book a show somewhere else or whatever. Well, I mean, and also like not after fucking 10 years of doing it. I don't expect anybody to know who I am, but I'm like I'm pretty funny. So just let me on yeah. stage and let you me know fucking who you do are. 5 minutes, yeah. What's your name again? Gavin. Yeah. I think. I'm not I'm Feliga. Not sure. yeah, yeah. But listen, if your business is the art and you're treating the artists like terribly, then you're not going to go far. Yeah. Like cuz it, it's one thing to be like, oh, it's the business's uh drinks, we make a lot of money off drinks and we make a lot of uh, money off uh people hanging out and partying, then sure, then that then you have a you have a different business model and then the sideline is the artist, but if it's actually the comedy or the music and you're treating them terribly, you have to pay for this. They're not like there's people who would be amazing or will be amazing in the future and then what what's going to happen in the future? They're going to be like, that That club fucking sucks. Fuck that club. Part of me kind of likes the quirky little like, oh yeah, one time Will Ferrell paid five bucks to perform here. You know, sure, like but Will Ferrell doesn't. N- not anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but doesn't I, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He won't ever be like, that club, it's so nice that they made me pay. They'll be like, he'll be like, fuck that guy. It's like a story. I don't know. No, it's, it's like it's, that, 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 that restaurant Dick's Last Resort where the waiters are mean to you. Yeah, but like, dude, I, I think that as a model in general, no, absolutely not. I, I think I'm it's saying. really common though in comedy clubs in the Yeah, US. and I think, I think it's a bad model. Also, uh, if you talk to the manager or owners or whatever, they might actually uh, inform us all of a sudden that no, actually comedy is not their main business and they sell fucking uh, yeah, sure. finger food, uh, food and uh, french fries and, and beer. So uh, they definitely press that a lot. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually make Less or the same amount from tickets I mean, than they for, do. Yeah. That's def- yeah, that's definitely true. I know Yuck Yucks at, in Toronto, which was like the main comedy club in Toronto, will you? They have an open mic night, and you sign up for it, whatever, two weeks in advance, whatever they have you, and they definitely make way more money off of the food and the drinks. However, if you don't get on, you don't get on. You don't perform, and they have lots of people who go back to that club. When they're famous and are like, oh, I, I performed here when I was an amateur. But if they have, they were treated shittily, and it's not even just about money. It's more like if yeah, you got I treated understand. shittily and like I stuff think like that. people have a little Stockholm syndrome or whatever when it comes to like capitalism in general. It's just like they don't mind being abused as long as it turned out okay later on. It's like there's so many people that is like, well, you got to fucking earn your way, which means you're gonna be a bitch for five years and work for free or whatever job it is. People say that shit all the time, so I'm not really sure about. Uh, what you're saying i don't know because i'm i'm thinking i mean i understand that yeah stockholm syndrome is cool to have <laughs> is that what you're saying it doesn't like, make any fucking sense man. like i know what that means <laughs> and i have a retort which is to repeat what you said as if i understand All right, it shut up come on, come on man. Man. don't ever do it I feel, I feel like a third wheel right now if you guys yeah. start yeah. passively yeah. fucking so being to each other What's the best show you've ever had? I'm really, I'm really happy to uh, uh, to to record the best podcast episode you guys and have ever. the last. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, the last shit. with if, if yeah, Sorry. if me is gonna be the the and straw breaking the fucking podcast back, that's no, gonna be no, Beatrice. Pretty, we need you back. Pretty amusing. Yeah. Yes, please come back, Beatrice. <laughs> no, I could see. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was t- too many people, three people hosting a podcast. I was like, that's ridiculous. But now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand that. You it's were like right. living with one person, the tension yeah. builds. But if you have three people, there's always one person to be like, what you're arguing about is stupid. You know? No, like I said, I, I really do think that like editing the podcast is a huge toll mm-hmm. where you listen to the people too much and that's all it is. And I appreciate you doing that work every week and I think you're a fantastic person <laughs> and a great comedian <laughs> and just a generally nice guy and on top of that very tall. And I, I value you and I cherish you and appreciate you. Thank, thanks, man. I, I'm all right. I'm all right now. And, I took a and, piss. I just need to piss, really. Initially, what I was going to say you guys are too nice because I don't like... Uh, not today. This has been kind of weird, but <laughs> but normally I'm like, no, you guys introduce too much positive positivity into comedy. I'm not with that. I'm like, I don't like uh, I don't like feeling good. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, comedy's I, for the sad losers. Yeah, exactly. With that said, like, although I understand what you're saying in general, because you can't trust the person. 
where you're like, why are they always so nice? And like, uh, I know for myself, I have like, I'm nice. And then if someone crosses my boundary, I'm like 100% go fuck yourself. I'll beat the shit out of you kind of style. And it's a little much. And so I understand my, where I'm crossed the line. And I'm like, I shouldn't have done that. It, and sometimes that line is a little Mm. Like it's not actually a line. I just thought that they crossed the line, <laughs> yeah. and so it's, it's a little a demarcation. Bad. Ariel, yeah, so like so, uh, so yes. What were you gonna say, Ariel Mister get- Interrupting fucking idiot? Fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go you fuck fucking, get him. Man. You always fucking interrupt me, and you're like, oh, I, uh, uh, and you're not listening. <laughs> And it's a fucking podcast, man. You gotta fucking listen. Yes, p- fucking yes. Fucking idiot, man. You're, Ariel, you, have, you're you are autistic and you're retarded. Ooh, man. Yeah. Fuck autistic. You're retarded. Ariel <laughs> will get so mad and he will be like, "I will <laughs> solve racism." That's all I wanted to say. That's what you. you that's what you interrupted me for. <laughs> God, you're an idiot. You're so stupid. It would have been Fuck funny solving your diet racism. Time. I want to solve <laughs> autism. Put them in fucking. <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't think you have autism. I'm kidding around. You're starting to sound like Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys. Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. By the way, I'm done. Yeah, you did. I'm also, I'm also. You did ask me a question like five minutes ago, but I ignored it. What's the best it. show you've ever had? Oh, okay. I don't know. Top, give us a top three. <laughs> you brought up they're the all they're all terrible. <laughs> no, I wanted to hear the question again because I forgot it. Oh, I see. What's sorry, the sorry, best my show mistake. you've ever had? There's not one show. Uh, I mean, they were they were all good. How about that? Because sounds of the love from the audience. <laughs> Ugh, I'm making myself wretch. Just fucking. I do it for that. the people. I yeah, do this exactly. For the people. No, I don't know. I've I've done a few shows that were for like you know. A thousand people or, or more, but those aren't necessarily the best ones. But the best ones I think are like at at might actually been my first few years of comedy because I wasn't very good back then. But it was like just things were more raw in general. The audience was uh, more excited, maybe in a sense, because they're like they didn't know what to expect at all. So you get these crazy reactions on both sides of the spectrum. And and like I said, those uh, some of those early shows were really packed. So. It, it was pretty live. The best ones are when I get to improv, like, you know, r- riff. And it's really anytime a new joke works and you get a new punchline in there or something, that's that's when I'm most excited. Do you actually, was there a joke when you first started where you were like, this is a fucking sweet joke? Was it the first joke where you're like, yes. Yeah, there might, I think there was a couple that they ended up in like my, my special. I'm doing air quotes here. Uh, but they're in Polish. One of them is definitely not translatable. Oh, it was in it's Polish. It's just, it would be in Polish. Yeah. Wait, what, English? Kurwa, 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 yeah, that's exactly. How do you know my material so well? I was <laughs> <laughs> uh, f- trying to think what's, I don't know. It's for, for the, ultimately for the audience to decide which <laughs> jokes are the best. And I don't always agree with them, but, you know. No, but specifically for you, where every time you did it, you were like, oh, yeah, this is a. Mm-hmm. Your hit that okay. you could do. Well, I don't first know. First one. The joke, the joke. Oh, the first, like the earliest one? No, the earliest one. I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking okay. about like earliest one. Like, I can't, I can't remember. See, things like this, I really do have to think about it for a while and recall okay, okay, because okay. I just, I just move on. I, yeah, I let's don't. take a minute. <laughs> In the meantime, what's it like to manage the energy of a thousand people versus like, Oh, I mean, if you're managing 50. it, then usually it's a longer show and you're probably doing really well. And I think they came there to see you. Whereas, like, yeah, on the other end, maybe you, you are still managing it, but not in a good way. You're like, you're trying to, because you can't please everybody. So I just guess, you know, give them the best energy you can, but without like compromising, which it is kind of difficult. If there's a bunch, a huge room and a lot of people, especially me, I'm like fairly low key. I'm not going to go out there running around and screaming. So I guess I got to just, you know, I do the same shit I usually do. I'm like, serve the joke as confidently as I can and uh, wait for the laugh. And if not, I continue. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's one song. I, mean, I it, like when you do that, when you're like, you're going into something and then it's a slight laugh, but you were maybe, I don't know what you were, was going through your head, but maybe you were expecting something more. And then you just keep going. It's like a, it's, it's a style that I really, 
I like that style. I like that style where it's just like you just keep going, keep going, keep going. People and then people start laughing more and more and more, and you still keep going. You don't pause as much as I yeah. think I would, and it might be a nervousness really? thing for me. But okay. yeah, no, I think maybe I did. I I would get more flustered in the past, especially when something doesn't uh, uh, doesn't go. So I would doesn't get a laugh. So I, I've tried to get over that and just like kind of ignore it. And and also I. If it's do, if I'm doing poorly, I'll save it with like you know a, a shitty joke about how bad I'm doing or something on the spot. But I try not to do it too often because I feel like that gets tiresome too. Like I've seen pro comics that are fairly accomplished by now. Like you know, at a at open mics a couple of years ago, working on material, and every time they uh, he uh, he didn't get a joke in, like it, it didn't get a laugh. They'd say something like, uh, "Oh, fuck you guys," or whatever, and it's like funny the first or second time, but after a while, it's just a crutch, and I think you need to get rid of it. Yeah, I have that with um, like when I I'll ask someone where they're from, and then I'll be like, "Oh, me too." I have that a little bit, so. <laughs> I, I oh, like Jordan I, missed that. I think he wasn't I wasn't listening to him. He wasn't listening uh, at all. That was for you, buddy. I, I feel like uh, <laughs> when people laugh at that, they're laughing at just a moment of honesty and transparency. But if you keep saying, uh-huh. "Well, I suck," then that just becomes reality. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so. Yeah, and also you don't want to say it. I, I would definitely have a tendency to be self-deprecating, not just on stage, but in general. And I've noticed over the years, like how that affects my uh, people's perception of me and I'm like well, okay maybe I shouldn't do that as much because to me it's funny or it's like an easy out but yes especially if you're on stage and they don't know you and one of your first jokes is going to be like oh I'm not good <laughs> when maybe that's not entirely true that yes they're going to start thinking that you're not good yeah, so right. gotcha all right well uh ladies and gentlemen yes. uh this has been quite the podcast with love Lots of things going on. Yeah. Uh, and I think you should guys give it, Sorry, I interrupted you. Again, yeah, yeah, that's okay. But I'm you, used to it. You should probably give it to me to edit, and I'll just fucking. I'll make I'll make it into I, a huge. I will I will say that actually this you give us the Feliga cut. Yeah, this will yeah. be yeah this will be a very highly edited podcast <laughs> and I'm editing this part out. But like I really wish it, I really screaming. wish it weren't like I could I feel like you could leave. Everything almost. Yeah, yeah. And so I will I'll go through some stuff and like as long as it's it's resolves itself, I think that's a huge thing for me. Because like I'm I just want it to resolve. That's all. He just wants to solve racism. I want to solve racism. I mean, we never even got through fucking racism. And it just sounds like let's Jordan's do racist, and I don't two, want okay? that. Okay, we'll just have a br- five minute break, and then let's go back <laughs> really? to racism. Really? You want to do that? <laughs> I can do that. Sure. Uh, I've got stuff to do later. Yeah. Uh, All right. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's funny. You just went with air quotes. I air quotes. It's stuff. like stuff. Fill in the blank. It could be anything. It's like, <laughs> be like, yeah, he actually Fill has to blank. inject <laughs> insulin so he doesn't yeah. die. Let's or, go to the hospital. It's like Cthulhu. It's scary because you, you got to envision the worst thing you can imagine. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> well, thank wait, you. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, I'm holding on. <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted it to resolve itself, and you're like, "All right, well, let's end it anyway." Okay. Well, so we're, I, I'm not racist. What else? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ra- the racism stuff will never resolve itself. No. We well, support Me Too. It was a very positive this movement. Podcast, not through this no, podcast. You're right. No, Me Too okay, was a very positive movement it. with. Uh, Me Too was fine. To happen. No, no, that's no, not let's not thing. go back to Me Too. You were going to do an outro, right? Before I. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. You don't have to do it again. So but what if you want to say? do it, that's just, fine. what were you going to say? Yeah? Yeah. You're cool? I'm. Yes. Please say it so we can all go home. Are you sure? I'm already home, but yeah. Are you? Yeah? You sure? You want it? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that, that's been... Co- <laughs> so you're just doing what I was going to say. <laughs> so just- yeah, there's the joke. That's the joke. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, professional comedian Jordan Thomas Gray getting jokes. Uh, no, I'm autistic, okay? <laughs> you're retarded. Oh, don't say the R no, word. No, that's, that's mean. I, I apologize. Jordan, I actually... With that said, like that, this will be cut out, but like, <laughs> it, <laughs> it really is. It really has to do with so much of the editing that I'm just like thinking about while I'm doing this podcast. So I think that's a lot of it, and the editing that I did earlier, where I was like really like fuck, and it also mad at myself for doing similar things, and so also 
because of calling you autistic and knowing that you're a human being and you're 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 regular yeah as much as you say you're autistic i don't think you're as dumb as a person <laughs> as other autistic, as, as, as fucking autism retarded is. autistics that people are but i, I think no i i know I, that's that, i don't i don't treat you i don't treat you like that however it's happened it's happened many times where i feel like i have to treat you with kid gloves because you get bunched up and i want us to have like a kind of like Back and forth, that's like a normal back and forth. And I think that's a possibility and it's happened many, many times. And I think we've gotten very good. And the more we know each other, the better it is. And so I think I stepped over some boundaries with my anger issues. And so I'm mad at myself more than mad at you because I'm, I don't like when I get angry because it really annoys me to be angry. And I, I'm just mad at myself. And so because of that, I want to apologize. That's all. I wasn't listening. <laughs> all right, good, good joke. <laughs> also, I will. I, I, I will say. Yeah. I will say on that. I think note, I, I'm interrupting. Maybe I should go. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gabo, give me a second. Give me a second. <laughs> You're I will keep say. Going. Yeah, I, I will say. I would love it if your jokes were good. <laughs> like so many jokes are bad, and I edited so many shitty jokes from last time. And I'm like, fuck, this joke sucks. Maybe you just don't get the jokes, so don't delete them. Neither of us, and it was another person, there was another person who was like in the room, neither of us got the joke, and I was like, all right, well, this joke didn't work. The I'm going to edit it out. we'll get the joke. Well, I'm usually not going to laugh anyway. I don't think so. so. I don't the think audience. so. Like, quit, quit deleting my jokes. You're making me sound not funny. Well, it's better than what, I promise you, it's better than <laughs> Leave it what in. was going on. I man. listen, I listen. <laughs> I listen through. You send you send the rough cut, and then I look through the very highly edited cut, and then I cut things need to be cut. If I don't like a joke that I did, I'll cut it out. How about that? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all right. Gavo, Gavo it's been great to have you. you. Uh, you've been a fantastic Thank guest. Uh, let's all this give it up pleasure. for Gavo Faliga. Ladies and gentlemen, Gavo Faliga. Gavo Faliga. We still don't know where you're from or who you are, but hey. Yeah. I, Racism is solved. No, I, so, I, it's been I, a good episode. You. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we, on the comedy... Let's do this again soon, guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've had Gabo Filiga on the Comedy Hole podcast. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank Listen you. Listen to his podcast, Something the, in Polish. Sure, Nagrawisz, though. And did you get that? Yeah, yeah if you speak if Polish. You guys, if you guys want. You should. Or there's English. one, there's did one in that? English yeah, as well. It's, it's very rude and funny. Yeah. Actually, mm-hmm. I've been on that. Yeah, yeah, we never mentioned no, that. That was a pretty good episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a fun time. It was a really fun time. And you're, now we all s- go ahead. So you're never doing that again. You're not doing the. Did you get that podcast? We can discuss it off mic. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, fine. And now we say all oh, at the Don't same worry, time. I'm editing this highly. <laughs> I know, I know, but. <laughs> and now we say as one, one, two, three, ciao, ciao. Okay, bye. Yeah, so guys, follow the Comedy Hall on Facebook, on Instagram. Check out our shows. We will be so happy to talk with you. Also, if you have any suggestion about possible topics for this podcast, reach out. If you want to be part of the podcast, reach out. If you're a comedian, then you'll stop by Warsaw, come, and we will have fun together on stage. So, ciao.